Our next um, uh, performance is another interpretation, which is probably very pleasant for you all, seeing that you don't have to sit through another very droning and informative speech like that, which I would actually take offense to, so don't worry really about that. So our next performance is by Taylor Ray Umber. She's been doing dramatic interpretation for four years, and it's my complete pleasure to introduce her next piece. And now, she wanted me to tell you that dramatic in interpretation is extremely emotionally compelling, which I would completely agree with her uh, on. I used to do drama interpretation, and to be completely honest, what I used to do doesn't do as much justice to this event as Taylor Ray is about to show you. So, I'll leave the floor. <laughs> and talented artist of the 20th century, who died far too soon in her life and her career. Louise, a dedicated fan, but more importantly, a close and personal friend of Patsy's must learn to cope with the loss while reliving their friendship. Learning that the love of a friend will never die. Always Patsy Klein, by Ted Swindley. By 1961, I was, well, I was divorced. Thank God. <laughs> and I was working as an electronic technician. <laughs> oh, well, we can't all be hairdressers. <laughs> well, my boss, he loved country music, and he would keep the radio station tuned here in the lab. And one day, one day I heard that voice again. So I called Hal Harris, local disc jockey, to see who it was. And he said that was Miss Patsy Klein singing out all the pieces. So I said, Hal, hey, you play the one for me again. And he did. <laughs> uh, Patsy Klein's music made me feel so alive every time I heard it. Now, I'm nearly worried that poor man at the radio station half to death. I called him every afternoon four or five times a day. And he'd say, Louise, I just played your song. And I'd say, well, flip her over and play the other side. And uh, in an hour, play my song again. And he did! <laughs> <laughs> Well, one day I said, Patsy Klein is coming to town, and I am going. I'm going to get all dressed up in my western clothes, and I'm going to get there at 6.30. My van didn't even start till late, but I was going to get there at 6.30. <laughs> so that night, I picked this table right there in front of the bandstand. We'd been sitting there about 15 minutes, all engrossed in beer talking. I, well, I saw this girl coming across the way. And something in my mind went dang, 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 that is Miss Patsy Klein. Oh, she had on this uh, pale pink cotton two-piece suit that, and white high heel pumps. You know, and she just stood there looking at everything. And no one else was paying any attention to her at all. So I just picked myself up and I walked right over to her. Excuse me, Miss Klein. I 
just wanted to tell you how uh, fond I am of your music. <laughs> I'm here with a friend of mine, and I was wondering if you don't mind if you, if you might stop by and say hello. Now y'all listen up, because you're not going to believe what she did next. She asked to come sit with us. Lord, take me now! <laughs> well, in no time at all, we were talking like we had known each other all of our lives. Now, Patsy was no stranger to us, but didn't you know something? Well, Patsy was just as much us as we were. Well, Patsy blew the roof off that honky tonk. Now her fans were stomping and hollering for more. And after the show, she signed autographs. And some of her fans even took pictures with her. And after a while, she said, Louise, honey, I have got to go. And I said, oh, we'll take you home. But first, you got to come by my house for some bacon and eggs. Lordy, she loved that. <laughs> and we were standing in my kitchen just laughing and chattering away. And we talked about everything. Oh, me and Pat the Klein. And we just poured our hearts out. <laughs> now we talked about children and husband problems, and broken hearts and love loss and love spam. Oh, hell, we sound like two old people writing country songs. <laughs> <laughs> me and Pat the Klein told each other every secret either one of us had ever known. And she told me it was the first time she'd been away from home since her baby had been born. And she told me her and her husband weren't getting along too well lately. And, well, she told me about these hell raising arguments they were having, and I knew, I knew only too well how she must be feeling. She told me that sometimes she would get so mad at her husband, she would want to hit him over the head with a skillet, but she was afraid she'd break it. <laughs> she said, she said that sometimes she would go to pick something up, throw at him, and say, uh-uh, Patsy, you just paid for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was like finding the sister I never had. The next day at the airport, she said, Louise, honey, I want your address, because I don't want us to lose touch. So we exchange addresses, but you know how it is, you think, well, that will be the end of that, and I will never hear from her again. In less than two weeks, I received my first in a long series of letters and telephone calls from Miss Patsy Klein. Now, I received my first one on May 29th, 1961. Now, and I want to read it to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dear Louise, <laughs> I wanted to take the time to run a line or two to thank you folks for the nice way you treated me while I was there. I sure do appreciate all you've done. My sincere thanks, and I sure hope I can be as nice to you all sometime. As for me, the kids and I are doing well. Hale is still popping, of course. And I don't know how much longer I can stand this way of living. But the little ones are coming first with me, so <laughs> until then, <laughs> I will just grin and bear it. Love all lights. Patsy Clark. Well, the next day at the airport, she said, Louise, honey, I want you to drink. <laughs> and one morning, about two years later, I was at work, and as usual, I was waiting for Hal Harris to play my favorite Patsy Klein records. Oh, instead, they came on the radio, and they said that Miss Klein been killed in an airplane crash on her way back from Nashville. She was 30 years old.
each time someone speaks your name. It's been a long time now. <laughs> Master Lesson will play those records for me. <laughs> you know, I look at these letters she wrote me and I remember. No, and I know. Love always.